It's your breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Sometimes when we go through tough things, we um, we want to run away. And I really like this song. It's a nice song because it kind of shows us like we don't want, you know, running away. God is so good. You know, we just sang about how his grace is so great and God is so good. And when we need him most, sometimes we just like we don't want to face it because we don't want to face ourselves in the mirror. And I think about this song when I think about that because <clears throat> sometimes I'm like, I'm running the wrong way, Lord. And we really need to be running to, to the Father. And yeah, he'll still chase us. He'll still chase us down. So ch thank God for that. And he'll still chase down our loved ones. Thank God for that too. You know, he loves us. Loves them more than we can even know how to love them, you know. Um, if he's a gracious God and, and he's a good God, then let's run to him instead of away. For too long on my own, I wasn't created. Son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a contest for that kind of love.
just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Just as I am and waiting now to rid my soul of one dark lie to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot of land of Just as I am, thy love unknown hath grown in every burial town. Now to thee, thine yes, O thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, O wretched blind, slight riches healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee to find the land of God I come, I come. So my been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able for I will sing of the goodness of God we come to you Lord we come to you because all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able well i will sing of the goodness of god I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, we thank you that all our life, God, Lord, you have been faithful. Lord, I can speak for myself, God, how all my life you have been faithful. Amen. And Lord, that tonight we give you praise and glory and honor because you are our heavenly father. Lord, tonight I pray that you will speak, God, Lord, that you have a word for your people tonight, God. I pray that you will just hide me behind your cross, God, Lord, that everything I say, God, Lord, that will directly from your mouth. And Lord, we give you honor, praise, and glory. You are the good Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. How's everybody doing?
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Thursday night worship and uh, what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I got some few announcement few announcements for you tonight. All right. Um, Aspire this Sunday, January 28th, 5 p.m., ages of 18 and 40, all right, um, at Pastor Justin's house and Miss Lisa, you, you know, so age of 18 and 40 um, is a home group that we come and we talk about the things of God and building community and love on each other and encourage each other. And not only that, we have food, you know, that's, psh, so come out, that's um, January 28th, um, 5 p.m., Amen? Amen. Ties and offering. We're going to take out ties and offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we can come here and have the opportunity to give back what is yours. Lord, I pray for any person in here in the name of Jesus, whoever is struggling, Lord, that you are their Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Lord, that you are their provider, that you are, will provide for every need. And Lord, we give you this offering in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I am very excited about the word tonight. Amen. amen. So if you, you better buckle up, you know, you better buckle up tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a word for you tonight. I've been, whoo. How many of you ever get so excited that you just, like, People, you get annoyed by other, like, people get annoyed by you because you're too excited, right? <laughs> it, it, people was like, all right, that's enough, all right? Oh, yeah, so I'm like, I'm one of those people when I get excited for the, th I'm always excited for the things of God, right? So people will look at me and be like, all right, that's enough. Calm down. You're making us look bad. You know, and that's how we should be as a Christian, as a believer. We should always be excited. We always, because you know why? Your king lives. He lives on the throne and, you, and he calls you son and daughter. Amen? And he loves and cares for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bible with you today, I got to slow down. If you have your Bible with you tonight, right, turn with, you, turn with me. In the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read from verse 24 to 30, 25 to 34. Well, I'm going to read from verse 24 to 35, 34, amen? Matthew, that's the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, amen? If you're there, if you have your Bible with you and you're there, say amen. amen. And if you're not there, say hold up. All right, there's no hold up. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, 20, 24 to 34. It says, Now no one can serve two masters, for either you hate one and love the other. He will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve, you cannot serve God and money. Verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you would drink, nor about your body, what you would put on. It is life, isn't not life more, more than food and then body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable? Are you not, listen, I'm going to read that. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by by being anxious can add a single hour in the span of life. And why are you anxious about clothes? Consider the lily of the fields, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will, you, will he not more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all of these things, and your heavenly Father know that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, 
do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious about itself. Sufficient for the day is own trouble. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, listen, today is the title of my sermon is Seek Instead of Worry. Seek instead of worry. One of my favorite scripture is Matthew 6, verse 6, um, chapter 6, verse 30, 33. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. So when I left, when I left Samoa at 16 years old, when I left home, every Everybody back home always said, put God first. I never really know what that means. But here it is. He says, seek God first, right? We have, you cannot, there's always a saying that people always say now that you can have it all, right? You can have it all. You can't have it all. Why is that? Verse 24 says, you cannot serve two masters, right? Rather, either you serve God or money. Woo! So listen, instead of seeking, right, instead of worrying, seek instead of worrying, right? So you have to seek who? God first. You have to seek him first. Your always first priority is him. Because you know why? You are his first priority. He always, he never go without a second thinking about you. He constantly, you're always on his mind. Believers today, listen to me. You got to get that into your head. We got to get that to in our heart that God is constantly thinking about you every second, every moment of the day. And sometimes we forget. Why? Because worry comes in. Woo listen, listen, I look up the word worry, right? This word worry is like insane. I'm telling you. How many of you tonight, listen, how many of you tonight, don't raise your hand. How many of you tonight, if I asked you right now, if you have any worry, anything in your life that you're worrying about right now, you will raise your hand. I bet you any much there's some of you that you're worrying about your job, you're worrying about something that's not even in your control. And you right now, you're stressed, you're losing sleep over it because you're worried, right? But here is, it's amazing how Jesus is talking about this. He said three times in this, in this, um, in this, in this chapter, three times he said, do not be anxious about your life. Do not be anxious about what you should eat or drink. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. Oh man, uh, listen, I gotta calm down because I did have a joke for you to tell, but it's so important as a believer, right, that we constantly have to be in a position that we always seeking God first. That no matter what comes in your life, who's going to be first in your life? That's a Justin. If you weren't, if you missed last week, what's a powerful message? What are you looking at? Talking about your eye. If you are not seeking God, and your eyes are not Him, guess what? The worries of life. All of a sudden, you get distracted and be like, whoa, oh man, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do that. What happened if this happened, right? You get this, but if you seek God, right, if you seek God, yeah, there's going to be worry comes in your life, but guess what? God will fight the battles in your life. God will take care of every worry. You don't, you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is be like, come and seek him. Seek him first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There was at the dinner, at the dinner, mom, mom, are bugs good to eat? Asked the boy. Let's not talk about such thing at the dinner table. Son, his mother replied. After dinner, the mother inquired, now son, what did you want to ask me? The boy said, don't worry, the boy said. There was a bug in your soup, but now it's gone. You have to seek God first. Stop word. I look up this word worry. I am telling you this word, this word is insane. 
it, 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 worry should not be in our life. Yeah, we should be concerned. We should be planned ahead of the future, right? But we should, we should not allow worry to consume your life. Because once worry comes in and consume your life, you cannot sleep. You will lose sleep over it. Right, there was a husband just pacing around in a room at, at midnight, 12, 12 a.m. in the midnight, and the wife is sleeping, and the wife woke up and says, why are you pacing around? What is going on? Come to bed. He says, oh my goodness, I cannot sleep. You know why? I borrowed $100 from Sam next door, and I don't even have the money to pay it back. The wife walks over, opens the window, and he says, hey, Sam, my husband doesn't have the money to pay it back. Sorry. Close the window, looks at her husband, and he says, now it's time for Sam to worry. Go to sleep. <laughs> this word worry, listen to me, this word worry, you will lose sleep over it. But Jesus is telling us, it's a command. I, listen, what? Pastor Missy, it's really a command? Yes, he said, do not. It's telling us, do not be anxious. So you don't have to worry because you know why? Because he is supplier of all your needs. He is a God that owns everything, so why worry? And I love how Jesus goes about the birds, right, about the lily, about adding another, like, can you add another hour in your life? Kids, so why worry about it? Bob Molly, what's that song? Singing, don't worry about a thing, because every little thing is going to be all right when you're right with him. Amen. When you're seeking him, and you don't have the worries of like, yeah, there were going to be worry. Like I said before, worry of life's going to come. But when you're seeking him, God is like this. Oh, yeah, bah. Anxiety, bah. Depression, bah. Right? He's, he's fighting your battles for you. He's getting rid of every anxiety, everything that you worry about that doesn't even matter. He is a good God. We sing about it tonight. And he is a faithful father. Listen, I cannot stop thinking about that when we were singing that song. Even when I was not a believer as a kid back home, not knowing who my father really is, that my father owns everything, he was still faithful to me. He was still faithful even when I didn't even know him. He was mending me and, and, and holding me, taking me all the way from the little tiny island of Samoa to come to Rhode Island, another small state. All the way to Rhode Island because he has a purpose, because he's faithful, and he loves me. Guess what? He loves you. Amen. He said, are you not more important? Are you not more valuable than these birds? I'm jumping ahead. Hallelujah. There are three things. Well, there are many things, right, that people, I went around and asked people, what do you really worry about? What do you lose sleep over? I went around and asked people, right? And there's a lot of answers. People give a lot of answers. But there are three main things that people say, right? One of the, the biggest worry that people worry about is money, mm -hmm. finance. No wonder why Jesus even said it before, right? Therefore, it was a chapter before. He goes, about money, you can't serve money, right? Well, you got to choose one or the other. Right? It's, it's, listen, money is good. It's, it, it, it's good that we have money. God gave it to us. Right? But when you make that as a Lord of your life serving money, that is wrong. That is a sin. And when you have all the money, right, you, you said, oh, I can have all the money. If Warren Buffett come to you right now and say, ask me anything you want, and you say a million dollars, guess what? You're going to get that million dollars, and guess what? You're still not going to be able to sleep. Why? Because you worry about somebody coming and stealing that million dollars away from me. So money is very important. Jesus is talking about worry. That worry is not, it's a sin. Oh my goodness, I just said that. 
gossip. You see, worry's not a sin. Yes, it is. It's a sin because it's a command. When you're breaking, when, when you're not following what God is telling you is a command, it's a sin. Hallelujah. I asked people, one thing was, it says that money, the other thing, I only wrote three things because there was a lot of answer, right? Money, family, and health. Those are the main three topics that, you know, that people worry about, that we lose sleep over. You know, when is my bills getting paid? When is the next paycheck? You know, is it going to cover the bills? Right? Worry about the health. Can I be transparent with you? I'm one of those people. I said this before. I don't care if I have money. Be honest with you. Which money is important. I should care about it because I got to provide for my family. But there's nothing that worries me. But the only thing I, 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 I look at myself and I'm like, what do I worry about most? And one of the biggest things that I lose sleep over it, I always think of my kids and my wife. Something's going to happen. Something's might happen. That was one of the biggest worry that we have as a parent I worry about. But I got to realize that. I got to know that if God is taking care of the birds, right, and taking care of every need that I have, he will take care of my kids. He's protections over my kids. So, and, and that's one of the biggest worry I have in my life. You know, money, hey. Eh. You know why? I'll tell you this. When I, the reason why I said that, I didn't worry about money, because I work for DA, DYS, Detention Center, right? I went in for an interview. Give me all these things, sign the paper. I went home, the angel goes, how much are you going to make? I don't know. How much is the pay? I don't know. It's, it's, it's not the fact that I said that money is not important. Money is important because God gave us the strength. God gave us the strength to work, right? You cannot just expect it and be like, okay, God will take care of supply all my need and let it be and not work. You have to. You have to. But never in, in this, I heard somebody said, never someone said, I worry about my faith saying, I worry that I didn't have an opportunity to tell somebody about the love of God, how that love changed my life. Never makes us think that we worry about the material things, about things in life, right? But we have to worry that where is your soul going to go? Are you going to be with a father or are you going to be somewhere else? Hallelujah. I look up the word worry. It says worry to have anxiety based on perceived or real, real impending misfortune. The other one, it says to divide or distract the mind. Listen to this, to strangle. It said that worry is to divide Right? And distract the mind because the mind comes, right? It says, hold captive everything that comes in your mind, right? You got to catch everything, right? Because it's, it, as long as it comes in your mind and you start worrying about it and you start consuming your mind, guess what? You're going to have, a, your mind's not going to be right. And it says to strangle. It's like worry is not, there was a song, it said, we're not meant to carry these. It's, it's, worry is not for you. You're not meant to carry it because when worry comes in, it will strangle you. And then all of a sudden, right, the thing that you worry about, it never happened. Never happened. We worry about the thing that doesn't even matter. These are the synonyms, right, words for worry. There's a lot of us. It says be worried, get into panic, get flustered, be anxious, lose your sleep, stress, panic, get all worked up, steam, alarming, troublesome, and sweat. 
Worry, word worry, sum up in two words. What if? What if? Worry would say, what if God doesn't love me? The word of God says that in John 3, 16, for God so loved the word that he gave his one and only son for you and for me. Romans 5, verse, Romans 5, verse 7 and 8, but God showed his love for us that while we're still sinner, Christ died for us. Where we say, what if he doesn't heal me? In God's word, it says, by his stripe, we are healed. In Isaiah 53, 5. Where we said, what, heaven, what if she doesn't like me? He or she doesn't like me. The word of God said in Psalms 139, 14, he says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Worry is always going to be, what if? What if God doesn't come through? What if this happened? What if we worry about that? What if? But in the word of God is, is true. Listen to me. The word of God is truth. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, Jesus began his pointing out on verse 25 that God gave his life. And if he gave his life, surely we can trust him for the lesser things. Jesus tells us to stop. Stop it. It's a command. Stop worrying. Right? Because you know why worry is? Worry is pointless. Worry is faithless. Dr. Um, Elder um, Roca said that worry is the enemy of faith. Right? It's the enemy of faith. So worry is faithless, useless, fruitless, worthless, and hopeless. Worry wears out the mind and wears out the body along with it. In, in study, in the doctor's study, there's a lot of study about with worry, right? It caused anxiety, caused something. There, I never, there was one time I preached a sermon about cast all your burdens on, right? And talking about cast all your anxiety. And I never felt ha that I never felt how anxiety feel, right? And I remember the time that I was right about to preach and I was at home on a Sunday and I was cutting, I was cutting something, I was making something for dinner and I was cutting and all of a sudden this overwhelming feeling that comes out of nowhere just come and I just feel like I couldn't even cut what I was, what I was cutting. That's how worry comes in. When worry comes in, it grips you. It strangles you because you are constantly thinking, oh, what if? Oh, what if? Oh, what if God doesn't supply my needs? Oh, what if God said that he would never forgive my sin? Yes, he did. <clears throat> See, worry affects a man's judgment and less his power of decision. Jesus said in John 10, 10, he says, I came to give you life, life to the full, right? If God gave us life, if he gave us life, right, surely he can tr we can trust him to give us the food to sustain life. If he gave you life, if he gave you and me life, he would definitely will sustain you and give you the food that you need for your body. Amen. And Jesus then went on and talked about, you know, is it life more important? Is, is the bird, look at the birds. Listen, if you worry, right? If every single time when you're home or anywhere else at work, when you feel like worries start to come up, go outside and watch the bird. Pastor Missy, what do you mean by that? Go outside and watch the bird. You see the bird just fly, right? Take, God take care. Jesus said he's taking care of the birds, right? You never see a bird 
store up things in, like store up the things in the, in the store room, right? You never see them burn like that. But yet God feeds them. But yet God feeds them. When they go in the, like, in the mud, God is already, there's a worm there, there's a worm there for, the, for the, the bird to eat. But he's talking about you are more valuable than them. Listen, if you didn't get anything like I said, like all tonight, maybe you probably thought, like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Right? If you didn't get anything, listen, your God loves you, right? He loves you, and you are more valuable than the bird. So I want you to think about that. I want you, when you wake up in the morning or go to work, to say, hey, I got this. My hungry father takes care of all my needs. I go to work, he gives me the strength to go to work, right? Because there are some people that say, oh, yeah, God take care of my need. I don't have to work. He say he supplies. No, you do. You do. You don't just say and you go lay on the couch, watch TV for 24-7, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my, I got five minutes and I got eight pages. <laughs> Whew. All right, we got to get along with this. Jesus goes on to speak about the birds. Birds work for their food. They do work for their food, right? Right? If you start to worry about something, just go outside and look at the bird. You are more valuable than the birds. There was a Jewish rabbi, right? He was so fat, I was, got this from one of the commentaries, it says, a Jewish rabbi was so fascinated by the way an animal lives. He said, in my life, the rabbi said, I never seen a stage beetle as a dry of figs, or a lion as a potter, or a fox as a merchant. Yet, they are all nourished without worry. If they who are created, listen to me, if they who are created to serve me are nourished without worry, how much more ought I who is created to serve my maker to be nourished without worry? To serve my maker to be nourished without worry. When you're constantly serving him as you seek him first, it says in 30, verse 33, seek him first and all these things shall be added to you. When you seek him first, all these things are going to come. What other things, Pastor Missy? All the things. He said all the things. The material things are going to come. We don't serve, we don't seek God to, to seek his hand, right? We seek his face. When we seek his face, his hand provided. So stop worrying. Listen, I, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, stop worrying. Stop Well, with that voice, right? Stop worrying. He has your back. He loves you, right? Look at the birds. He takes care of the birds, right? Hallelujah. Also, Jesus talked about the bird. Also, Jesus talked about in the same one, he says, like, you cannot add a single hour to your life. You worry about stuff that you can, how many of you says, man, I worry that I'm going to add another hour in my life. So I got to worry more. No, you can't. Jesus talked about the lily, right? Lily of the fields. Right, how God, listen, our heavenly father showing all, all this, literally is telling us, do not worry. Do not be anxious about anything. Look at the bird. Look at the lily of the valley. Right, don't look at the lilies. God clothes them. They twirl and they spin. I like that. Right, they twirl and they spin. But they die today and throw it into the fire tomorrow. Right, if 
even Solomon in all his glory, right, doesn't even look come close comparing to what God has made it beautiful. Are you not more valuable than these? So stop worry, stop being anxious because your heavenly father supplies all your needs. Listen, I talked to the men's group last, um, this past Saturday, right? God always supplies my needs. He does. Pastor Missy, now you're, you're exaggerated. No, I'm not exaggerating. God always come through. There are moments in time that we, sometimes you were like, God, when are you going to show up? But guess you know what? God always show up on time. Amen. He does. He's never late. He's never early. He's on time. So when you seek him, when, when you seek him with all of your heart, when you make him the Lord of your life, not money, right? Because you cannot serve two masters. You can't be in the middle. As Pastor Justin said, you can't be lukewarm. Either you serve the other or serve money. Or you serve God or money. So when you stand and seek him, continue to seek him, everything's going to fall into place. You're going to be like, what? 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 <laughs> right? All these things just start coming. Why? Because he, he, you are more valuable than the birds and the lily. Right? Hallelujah. Does anybody get anything out of this? Amen. Yeah? I think I'm going to close with this, right? Hallelujah. Then Jesus talks about, right, don't be anxious about tomorrow. Do not worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow has its own trouble. Right? You know what Jesus is saying right there? Being in a moment. Serve him today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Be like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to pray. I'm going to read. Don't wait until tomorrow. Today. Don't worry about tomorrow. As you seek him today, when you seek him today, he say, when you seek him and when you come near to him, he'll draw nigh to you. Right? When you seek him, you, you will find him. So seek him today. Jesus is like being in the moment right now. You know, Jesus was always being in the moment. Pastor Missy, what do you, how do you know that? In the story, right, in the story of Lazarus, all, all we know the story of Lazarus, Jesus' friend, right, they send a message to Jesus and say, Jesus, Lazarus is going to die. He's sick. He said, Jesus didn't leave. He said, he stayed there two days. Because Jesus is there doing in the moment. Because if he was thinking about and going to Lazarus, he would rush everything. But being in the moment, Jesus was being in the moment because where he was was important. How many of you, right, when you ever talk to somebody that you're talking to and they will worry about things and they look like they're there, but they're not there? You're like, yup, 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 yup. What did I say? Oh, I don't know. But being in the moment, right, you can't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You can plan, right, we can plan. We can't plan, but you can't worry about the tomorrow because tomorrow has its own trouble. Being in the moment, don't worry about tomorrow. Another story, right? Another story of Jesus being in the moment, right? Jesus was going and, and the centurion man bring his daughter. He says, you know, hey, my daughter's sick. Come with me. I need you to, to heal my daughter. Jesus is walking through the crowd and guess what happened? A woman, the issue of blood, touched the garment of his clothes. Jesus didn't continue moving on. He says, this moment right now is important. Even though the, the, the centurion like wants to, Jesus, let's go, hurry up. But in the moment right now, because Jesus wants to be in the moment, when he touched that cloak, Jesus said, who touched me? And it was all pertaining into that woman because he loves her being in the moment. Church, listen to me. Be in a moment. Be today. Serve him today. Serve him today. You can't wait until tomorrow. 
You can't wait until all your bills are paid. You can't wait about anything else to take care of everything else before you come and seek him. No, seek him today. Being in the moment. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Hallelujah. See, worry about the future is a sin. Because, listen, you can plan for the future, but worry and about the future consuming you is a sin because it denies the love of God, the wisdom of God, and the power of God. Worry denies the love of God that we imply that he doesn't care for us. What if? What if God doesn't come through? What if God doesn't love me? He already showed you. God already showed that he loves you. He said, I'm sending my son, right? Because you were separated from me, as Pastor Frank was preaching about the veil. You were separated from God, right? But the love of God says, you know what? I'm sending my son. Worry said it denies. Worry makes us deny the love of God in us. What if? Oh, what if? He, what if? And makes you think. Serpent went to Eve and what? Did God really say? And all of a sudden you were like, wait, did he really say that? Did God really say that? What if? Because you worry about things and it doesn't even matter. You worry about tomorrow, right? So it denies the love of God that we imply he doesn't care for us. John 3, 16. It denies the wisdom of God that we imply that he doesn't he doesn't know what he's doing. Yes, he does. Right? We imply that, God, you don't know what you're doing. Yes, he does. From the very beginning, God created you out of the dust, breathed the breath of life, and you created the first day, second day, say, it was good. Amen. I think he know what he's doing. I think God know what he's doing. I think God knows why you're here. I think God knows everything about you. But worry denies that. Worry will make us think that, oh, man, God, I don't think it's enough. I don't think you're capable enough, right? Third one and the last one, he says, worry denies the power of God. We say that he isn't able to provide for my needs. <laughs> he isn't able to provide for my needs. How many times that God has come through for you? How many times, right, in the story of, of Abraham, when he bring his son Isaac, right, he provided. That's where he called Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He's not just my provider. He's not just Isaac and Abraham and Jacob's provider. He's your provider. So why worry about the things of life when it comes to your way? You got to know who your father is. Your father cares and loves for you. You are more valuable than the birds. You are. So listen to me. Stop worrying about the things of life. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Because tomorrow have his own trouble. Seek him today. As you seek him, it says, seek him to seek him and all seek him and all his righteousness. Right? And all these things shall be seek him and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And that's why, listen, and that's why I get too excited when I go around and the people are like, all right, calm down. You know why? Because I know I am a son of a king. I know that where I came from, where he delivered me from, I should even be here. How many of you can say that? I, I should even be here. I should even be alive. I should be somewhere in the mental institute or be in bars. But God has saved your life. He does. Church, I, I want you to get this, what Jesus is saying here. He says, it's a command three times. Three times he said it. Don't worry. Do not be anxious about what you will eat, about what you will drink, about what you will wear. And then Jesus goes, yo, of little faith. Woo, that hurts, right? Listen. When you, are a, when you are a daughter and a son of the king, you got to walk out with your head how high. Knowing 
and saying to people, I am the daughter of the daughter of the king. I am not the head. I am not the tail, I'm the head. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to close. Hallelujah. I got some. Hallelujah. See, worry, church, it's not for meant for us to carry. Right? Jesus said it. Right? Even in Peter. Right? It says, cast all your burdens onto Jesus. Because what? He cares. For who? For you and for me. He does care. So worry of life, it says right there, it says seek instead of worry. You are going to have some, some times worry come in. But guess what? In those times that when worry comes in, guess what? You're in the storm. When you're in the storm, there's somebody in the storm with you. Amen. And he's the one that's fighting all those worries away from your life. But we have to seek him first, meaning he has to be the Lord of your life. Amen. He has to be the Lord of your life because you can't serve two things. You can't have it all. He has to be the Lord of your life. Amen? Stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 One of, one of the quotes says, when life feel like, when you like, when you feel like you're drowning in life, don't worry. Your lifeguard walks on water. Amen. Worry does not take away tomorrow's trouble. It takes away today's peace. It would take away today's peace. So stop worrying about tomorrow. Plan, but stop worrying. Don't let worry consume you. Church, listen to me. Don't let worry consume you. He's your heavenly father. You are more valuable to him than anything else. You are valuable. Listen to me. You are valuable to him. Every need that you have, he will meet those needs. Every sickness in your body, he is your Jehovah Rapha. He is your healer. He is your Jehovah Jireh. He is your provider. He will always, like I said earlier, you will always be on his mind. Always. Many times in my life, in my mind, I forget about him when I go to sleep sometimes. Sometimes I do and I totally forget about the love, the, faithful, the faithfulness, and the goodness of God in my life. So all these worries that life may bring, seek him. Seek him. He will take care of all those worries. Cast your burdens. You're not meant to carry you. You give it to him and say, God, now you handle it. Right? And he will. He will and he does handle it. Because you are more valuable. Amen? Than the bird. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, God, Lord, that, Lord, that you are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Lord, that you are our life. That you came, God, in those times when we're so worried about how are we going to have a relationship, how we're going to get through that veil. You sent your one and only son, one and only son, God, so that we may have life. So that we can fellowship with you. So that we can come to your throne and say, Jesus, I give you praise. I give you glory. You are my king. Lord, as tonight I pray for your church. I pray for every single person that has worry in their life in this moment, God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for your Holy Spirit from the top of their head to the sole of their feet.
Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your son. So tonight, we give you our worries. Lord, I pray that anybody that don't walk, that they don't not walk out of here, God, Lord, taking the worries with them, that they will leave it here. God, Lord, that you will take care of it. I pray for your people right now. Touch them. Provide for every need. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, church. If you need prayer, Miss Elisa is still going to be playing. I can pray for you. Hallelujah. But God bless you and stop it. Stop it. Stop worrying. He cares for you. You are valuable to him. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.